أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن وأنبتها نباتا حسنا وكفلها زكريا كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا قال يا مريم أنا لك هذا قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب هنالك دعا زكريا ربه قال رب هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد من سكن في من السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today's dua is actually something that may not apply to everyone but the lessons from it apply to everyone It's a dua of Zakaria alayhi salam who is the uncle of uh, Maryam salamun alayha and uh, Zakaria alayhi salam was responsible for taking care of Maryam when she was dedicated to stay inside the sacred masjid and this is the first time a woman was allowed to live inside the masjid just doing ibadah. It was an exception that was made, especially for her. And when this exception was made, the only one who was allowed to visit her was Zakaria salam. So the Kaffalaha Zakaria, Quran says, Zakaria took responsibility for her caretake, food, protection, and all of that. So the only one who would ever visit her is him. So he comes to visit her one time, and actually every time he would come to visit her, وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا Quran says, he would find that she has food around him, you know, around her. And she has, some say, fruits from out of season. And you know, nowadays, you, ha you and I having fruit from out of season is easy. You can just, you know, we, we have, you know, uh, artificial ingredients and we have, you know, hormonal growth of, of plants and you've got food coming and flying in from different parts of the world. So even though it's not our season, we can still get it. You can have strawberries year, year round, you can have bananas year round, etc. But of course, in the old world, you couldn't do that. There's a season for certain fruits and there's other seasons for other fruits, right? And if you're going to travel from a far land to bring the fruit, by the time it gets here, it'll go bad. So she would have fruits that don't belong to that season and they would be right there. And he would be in shock and he would come in and say, Anna laki hadha, Quran says. How in the world did you get this? How do you have this? And her response would be, Huwa min indillah. It's from Allah. It just, that's an easy response from it, it's from Allah, that's it. Like it wasn't even a shock for her. And she wasn't even trying to convince him otherwise. Like, innahu min indillah, huwa min indillah. This comes from Allah, that's it. In Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. She tells him, and she's, you know, if we accept the Christian narrations, she's about 16 years old at the time. And even from before then, this food is coming. So from like 12, the age of 12 onwards, she's getting this and he's seeing this all the time. And this one time when he, when he first sees it, or at this particular occasion when he sees it, and he sees this out of season fruit, he makes this dua. Or, or, or she tells him, Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Certainly Allah provides without any limits. Allah gives to whoever he wants without any limits. Now there are lots of lessons behind Allah giving without limits. You know, and I've given a khutbah about this before, but a quick recap, just a couple of things. One, you know, when if I was to give you, I would first check my account and see how much do I have before I give. So I would count first, how much can I give and how much do I have left? That's hisab also. Allah doesn't do that from His treasures. His treasures are endless. He doesn't look at what's there and what's left before considering what to give and what not to give. That's one of the meanings of bighayri hisab. Hisab also means muhasaba, meaning nobody questions Allah. Why did you give? Why didn't you give? How come you give this one this much? How come you give that one that much? Nobody can question Allah. So when bighayri hisab also means Allah doesn't, we don't question who Allah gives and who He doesn't give. The other meaning of hisab is that sometimes, you know, if for example, two of your kids, they, they, they took an exam and one of them did really well, one didn't do so well. So you have chocolate in your hand. You're like, hey, you got a hundred? Here's two bars of Kit Kat. And the other one, here's the wrapper. You know, like, because you're going to, based on performance, you're going to give. And if they did well, you give more. If they didn't do well, then you don't give more. But Allah doesn't do that. Allah gave Fir'aun so much kingdom. Allah gave Namrud and Atahullahu al-Mulk. Allah gave him mulk. And Ibrahim alayhi salam was homeless. You know, and he's been kicked out of his home. So you've got Allah giving, and he doesn't necessarily see. Did you, are you a good believer? Were you performing well? Were you praying all your prayers? Okay, now I'll let you breathe. Now I'll give you food. 
And if you weren't performing, you don't get anything. It doesn't work like that. Allah gives, so she's basically telling him also, it's not because I deserve this. It's not because I'm something special. Allah gives, and He doesn't check me first and then give. He just, He decides to give. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Hisab also means ihtisab. Ihtisab means imagination. Allah gives from where we can't imagine. That's another meaning of إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ So this young woman tells Zakaria alayhi salam that this is nothing to be surprised about. Allah Azza wa Jal gives, and He gives in such profound ways, and it's so beyond our imagination that that should never come as a shock to us. Now he was an old man. In another place in the Quran, alayhi salam, Zakaria alayhi salam, it's described, وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا That my hair, it's like a fire went over it and it's all turned white. You know like ash turns white? That's how he describes his hair. It basically means I've burnt, over, burnt my years out. I'm done, I'm, I've got one foot in the grave, basically. I'm about to die. And I'm worried that nobody's there to carry my legacy on. So in this old age, he's been asking, by the way, he's been asking Allah for a child all these years. And now he's an old man, he still doesn't have a child. Actually, since the time he got married, his wife was incapable of giving a child. And now they're both old. So, كَانَتِ امْرَأَةِ عَاقِرًا in Surah Maryam, My wife has always been barren. It's not like she became incapable of having a baby when she got an, became an old woman, that's obvious. But even when she was young, she couldn't have a baby. That was her case. So he's never been able to conceive a child with, with her. And in this old age, he sees this young girl with fruit from out of season, and Allah says, here's the dua, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهُ Right then and right there. When he saw this, immediately uh, Zakariya السلام, made a dua to his Rabb. رَبِّ هَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى Master, from your special behalf, from your special treasure vaults, grant me, give me the gift of a good child, or good offspring. You're the one who always hears dua. Profound thing for him to say. A couple of things I want to unpack here for you. I'll start with the end of this dua. إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى You certainly are the one who always hears the dua. He spent an entire life making the same dua and he didn't have a child. And you know when you and I make dua for something over and over again and we don't get it, we start saying to ourselves, or we even say it some to other people sometimes, man, Allah is just, I have been praying but I don't think Allah has listened to this dua. Allah is just, He's not listening to this prayer of mine. And this man, a lifetime of that same prayer not being answered. And even now he doesn't know if it's going to get answered or not. But one thing he never ever lets go of, one thing he's always aware of, Allah is always listening to every single dua. And there's no doubt about that. The dua that I saw answered, the dua that I haven't seen answered to my expectations, no dua went, went unheard by Allah. إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى If he was only referring to one dua, the time of that, of that time, it would have been إِنَّكَ سَامِعُ الدُّعَى Sami' is the one who's listening at the time. Sami' is the one who listens all the time, who's been listening. So he turns to Allah and says, I am not doubting all those thousands of times over, the, or over decades and decades that I've been praying for the same thing, that you didn't listen. I don't doubt that. But my heart sees some, I saw something right now and I just had to, I couldn't help myself, I made this dua. So now what, what made him make this dua? You see, it's a lesson to be learned that sometimes you meet people that Allah has given a gift to. Sometimes a miraculous gift. You know, you'll meet somebody who was diagnosed with a disease and they were given six months to live. I've met people like that. And they went and made dua to Allah. They cried before Allah, made tawbah to Allah, and they went back to the doctor and they said, Where's the, where are the cancer cells? What's going on? What treatment did you do? And they're like, well, I just made dua. That's all I did. And it's gone. And the doctors are scratching their head. You know, I've literally met people like that. And when that happens, you're inspired. If Allah can provide them healing, if Allah can grant them such gifts, if Allah can take someone who couldn't find work, who couldn't find any, you know, all the doors seem to be closed, and Allah opened doors from where they couldn't imagine, you look at that and you say to yourself, if Allah can do that for them, He can do that for me. Why do I have to limit myself to, I'm too old, as this man says, alayhi salam, I'm too old, my wife can't have a child. Well, if I, these out of season fruits are possible for this girl, then even if I'm out of season and my wife is out of season, what's the big deal? Allah provides without, beyond imagination. Allah provides without these limits, without, without these, these you know, restrictions. So I should ask Allah. And so he got inspired to ask Allah. But he didn't ask Allah the same thing. That's the important thing here. He didn't say, well, she got fruit, ya Allah, give me some fruit too. No, she got her, her rizq, that's what she needs. And he says, well, what do I need? What do I want? It's not that, ya Allah, you got her, I want the same thing. Not necessarily. I need my own form of rizq. 
And here you get something truly profound about Zakaria alayhi salam, his foresight, his forward thinking. And that is, you know, compare she got food and he asked for a child, right? There's a big difference between food and a child. Food is something I need for my body, for my sustenance. It will actually only last inside of my body within 24 hours. What is useful of it will stay, the rest of it will go. That's food. A child, however, and by the way, for a man who's almost close to death, for him to ask for a child, he's actually asking for something that he will not even live long enough to enjoy. Like he'll have this child, maybe he'll see a few years of this child, but he's basically close to death. And this child, inshallah, lives longer. Why is he asking for something he won't even get to enjoy, really? Why in the world? Because he understands there's different kinds of risk. There's risk for my body, like food. Then there's risk provision that doesn't feed this life of mine. It will feed the next life. It'll feed the... That's also risk. And I will die, but this child of mine... See, he didn't just ask for a child. He said, Dhurriyatan tayyibatan, A good, pure child. A good, pure child that has been purified especially by you, Ya Allah. So at this old age, he's not just asking for a, ch a baby, he's saying, Ya Allah, give me a baby that's going to be good. That's going to leave a good legacy behind. So whatever good deeds this child does, it's going to actually become rizq for the father. Because even if the father's not in this world anymore, he's being provided for by that child. What a profound thing to say. And that teaches us actually that there's two kinds of rizq. There's the kind of provision that you and I ask for that we need right now. Some of you need a job. Some of you need you know, healing from a sickness that you're going through. Some of you need relief from some other people that are hurting you. You need all kinds of things that you are in immediate need of right now. That's the kind of risk. But there's another kind of risk. The kind of risk that will live on in your favor even when you're not around. That's the only kind of savings that we can take with us, you see. You can have a lot of money in your bank account and you die and maybe that money is being invested and the money is growing and the stock you invested in or whatever took off and now it's a hundred times worth more than it was. It doesn't matter for you, you're gone. You're under the ground. It, it doesn't make any difference anymore. The property you bought, its value went up. So what? You're actually deteriorating in the ground. But there are some things that you can invest in as your provision that even when you and I are under the ground, they're actually still growing for us. And that's the kind of risk we should ask Allah for too. We're learning from this, the lesson from this dua of Zakariya in ayah number 38 of this surah is actually this is a gift from Allah. That the gift from Allah, Ya Allah, give me something. And it may be a child, in the case that we have children, that our children become not just dhurriya, they're already dhurriya, they become dhurriya tayyiba. They become good children, children that carry our legacy. And if we don't have children, that Allah give us the gift of allowing to make the kinds of investments, the kinds of deeds that will carry good forward even when we're gone. This is why somebody gives sincere charity to a masjid, or helps build a school, or helps take care of, you know, sponsors a teacher or something like that, because the good they do will actually perpetuate and will, uh, you know, serve other good and other good and other good even when they're gone, you see. So now the last thing about this, قَالَ رَبِّ هَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى is that his dua was immediately answered after that. Actually, angels came and told him, you're going to have a child. That, that, that happened. And it happened before he passes away, right? So this is at the very, very old age that he made this dua, and Allah Azza wa Jal decided to answer that dua. It's not like he wasn't making that dua before, but there was a plan from Allah, this is the right time for this dua. Why? Think about the wisdom. Allah gave him Yahya alayhi salam. Yahya alayhi salam played a very important role in supporting the mission of Isa alayhi salam. Actually, if you study the mission of Isa alayhi salam, he could not, Isa alayhi salam could not fulfill his role unless he had who with him? Yeah. Yahya with him. If Zakaria alayhi salam, Allah answered his dua 70 years before, 50 years before, Yahya alayhi salam would have lived and died and you would not have a Yahya to support who? Isa alayhi salam. So, and that, by the way, the fact that he got to support Isa alayhi salam, and he was shaheed in supporting Isa alayhi salam, he was killed while doing so. That honor would not have come to the family of Zakaria alayhi salam. That, that great noble status that Yahya alayhi salam achieved would not have been there. And so Allah's plan, sometimes you go through years of sadness, but that's part of Allah's plan to increase something more for you that you couldn't have gotten otherwise. He became for, Yahya became for Isa alayhi salam what Harun was for 
Musa alayhi salam, that, that's what happened. And that's, that was part of Allah's plan. So sometimes Allah delaying the response to our prayer is also wisdom. It's wisdom I, I can't understand because I want things right away. But we don't ever lose hope in the prayers of, with, with Allah. And we don't ever decide, well, I've been asking for two years. Allah didn't answer. Clearly this dua is not valid. Or Allah is not interested in answering this one. So I'm going to stop asking. If it's a valid thing you need, and it's a valid thing you want to ask for, you keep on asking. You don't decide when the best time is for the relief to come, or for the response to come. You know, just ponder over this. Two children were separated from their parents. Yusuf salam was separated from his father. Musa salam was separated from his mother. Musa salam was reunited with his mother. They both made dua to Allah to be reunited. Musa salam was back with his mother within a few hours. Yusuf salam was back with his father many years later. Same dua, and both good people, go, both good people. Some people say, my dua is not being answered because I'm not a good person. Don't blame yourself so easily. That's the schedule and the wisdom of Allah when He decides to answer a prayer. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant all of us righteous children that become a continued sadaqah jariyah for us and that we actually internalize that the most important thing actually for our children is that they lead good lives. Their education, their food, their, their, their careers, their, you know, their marriages, all of that stuff is important, but nothing is as important as them becoming good people. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us the ability to raise good children, and may Allah Azza wa Jal protect them from all kinds of evil. Barakallahu li wa lakum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.